Hello all, welcome to AuraTennis.com. In this session, we'll discuss about general import in Oracle Cloud ERP using SOAP Web Service. So before discussing about SOAP Service, we'll try to create a journal from the user interface, and then we'll see how do we create a journal import using the Fusion SaaS, using a, using a SOAP Web Service, okay? So now I'm navigating to the Cloud ERP instance. So now in this one, navigate to the general accounting role click on journals. So creation of a journal in the Oracle Fusion involves three steps. I mean to say like there are three levels of data which will be stored. I mean to say like when you create a journal, you have to create a batch, you have to create a journal header, then you have to create a line. So for any journal, you always require these three things to be provided. So I'll just create a journal now. I'll just click on create journal. So creation of data from the user interface helps you to find out what are the mandatory params required when you are creating, when you want to create any data, okay? So the first thing is, it's a batch number, right? Batch, batch name, X6, I'll just mention some batch name, X is general batch one, okay? So mention some description and then accounting period, here it mentioned the mandatory one. And if at all, if you have attachments, this is where you can attach it, okay? And then next thing is, you know, like this is journal name, okay? This is a journal name. And the next one is general general name. It's a general description. Next one is a ledger name, accounting date, and the currency information and category. So I'll just mention miscellaneous as of now. Okay. So as of now, what I'll be mentioned is we mentioned the general batch details, then we mentioned the journal details, general header, I can say, and then we are mentioning the journal lines. Okay. Just click on this key header. It's a key flexible segment. Click on this one. It shows the list of available account segment, select the appropriate one and, you know, like uh, save it. So it will open a pop-up, just to simply click on search. Just select in record. Most probably it will be, it will allow us to select that. Click on OK. Now, when you create any journal entry, the line should be a balance. Nothing but sum of debit is should be equivalent to sum of credit. Okay, so I'll just mention 100 here in the sum of debit, uh, in the debit line. And similarly, we'll create one more line because the general entry should be balanced, right? If at all, if you want to post it. Still, it allow you to save it, but just to want to have a proper valid general entry, the best thing is always your general entry should be balanced. And I'll just select another line. Now here I mentioned the credit. And now you can just click on save. Okay, so this is a process of creating a journal. Now here, if you observe carefully, you have general batch, general header, and general, general lines. So now we have seen the step of creating a data from the user interface. Now the next step is, I want to show you how do you create a general entry using a SOAP UI. So this is the SOAP visual which Oracle provided. So, so this is the one. So you just need to, you just need to replace the server name with your cloud instance. So in my case, my cloud instance was this one. Okay. My cloud instance was this one. So I prepared the pay, I prepared the visual accordingly. Okay. This is my cloud visual. So I, I opened my cloud visual in the SOAP UI. Okay. So here, if you observe, yep. So this is my SOAP UI. And I open my, this one. Cloud visual, and here you have to select a method. Just see the method which I mean to say the operation which you have to select. So the operation which you have to select for this one is import generals. Okay, so import generals is the operation which you require to be used to perform general import. Okay, now here if you observe, it's a the first one is a like here whatever you are seeing is a header part, right? So as of now I'll just remove it. Okay. So if you are using the SOAP UI for the first time, what you can do is just once you open the, you just need to click on SOAP. Okay. You just need to click on SOAP. I'll just show you again, maybe for your easier purpose. I'll just say test general import. Okay. Mention the project name. It's a, it's, a, it's a best practice to mention the project name. Now, copy the visual. Mention the visual here. Okay. Simply click on OK. What it will do is it will read the visual from the Oracle and it will load all the list of operations for you in the SOAP UI. So which allows us to invoke the appropriate operation. So here, if you observe, I'll just click on the general import, which, which we got it just now, right? This general import. And now here, if you observe, it provides async methods and sync methods, right? So, so here, if you observe, it is providing similar one, two things, right? General import service response pointing, other one is SOAP HTTP. So nothing to worry about the other one. Just use this one, SOAP HTTP. 
And in this one, import journal, here if you see, right, there are two things, right? Import journal sync and import journals. So now in our case, we'll go with the sync operation. So in the import journals, click on request, okay? Click on request. So once you click on request, it provides you the, it provides the payload to be passed to this method, right? So here, if you observe, it is asking all the list of parameters. So I already prepared all the information in my sample payload, okay? So now let us say if you're preparing it for the first time, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you need to mention all the values. And also important thing is, these all SOAP digital requires in Oracle ERP, any other web service, whichever you use it, you need to mention the credentials, then only it will work. So that is the reason what you do is just need to click on, you have to click on authentication and here click on add new authorization, mention, select the basic and mention the username and password. Okay, just mention the username, password, cloud username. Cloud username and the, your cloud password. Once you add up the username and password, then next thing is what you do is once you prepare your all your payload values, simply at this place, at the header level, just perform a right click and click on add username password like this. Okay, the username token will be added here. And similarly, you have to add up one more token called timestamp token. So in this one, just mention any, you know, it's like a millisecond, just mention a larger value and click on okay. And sometimes let us say if you're using your payload, like let us say you invoked it and after one hour, if you want to invoke your particular soap again, it may not work, right? So best thing is, remove this header part again and add up the header part and timestamp part again, okay? That is how we generally do it. Now, I'm just going back to my prepared payload because preparation of the payload involves good amount of time. It takes good amount of time in the, like in the integrations, right? So that, that, that is the reason what I've done is here, if you observe whatever the information which I provided here, it is exactly the same information which I used while creating the user interface. So here, if you observe, we know that we have a batch name, description, accounting period, and ledger name, accounting date, general category, currency. These are all the mandatory param parameters I mentioned here. If you observe the first thing, batch name, batch description. So now I want to mention with a new batch name. So I'll just mention 9,000 something. And similarly, 9,000 something. And this is my ledger ID. So here, what you can do is if you're not aware of how do you get a ledger ID, make use of a table called GL underscore ledgers. In the GL ledgers table, pass the ledger name, you'll get a ledger ID, okay? And then get the ledger ID. And accounting period name here, if you observe, you have let we, we already have it, right? Accounting period, mention this one. And accounting date, mention the current date. Source name, we know it. Category name, we know it. And this go with the default values. And now here, if you observe this part, right? Whatever the part which you have at this one, before before GL interface, this one, right? Interface row, sorry. So this part is a header part, nothing but your general batch part, okay? And the remaining thing, remaining thing is a combination of your general headers as well as lines. So now here, if you observe, while creating the front, from the front end, you have three levels. I was telling you, right? You have a batch, header, and lines. But here, if you observe, you have a batch information at the top level, nothing but whatever you have above general interface, that is a part of the batch information. And the remaining information, whatever you have here, this is combination of your header as well as lines, okay? Now here, if you observe, I mentioned two lines. One is this one, like uh, here, if you observe carefully, entered amounts, right? Enter CR amount. Similarly, I have same data with the enter DR amount. That's the only difference. Okay. Now what I'll do is, so I'll just, uh, okay. I'll, so I just prepared my payload. I have my user authentication here. Simply right click here, click on add username token like this, and it will add up the username token in the header part. And similarly, again, right click here, add up the times and just give some larger value. Click on okay. Now click on this particular green arrow icon, which will execute this particular web service. Okay. Now, if the result is zero, right? So now here, if you're, this is my response. I click, I invoke my SOAP web service and I got the response and the result is zero. If the result is zero, it is a success. Now, how can you validate one more thing? So this particular step is not, it's not fully done. I mean to say like, a, this is not load. This particular step is not loading the data into the base table. It loads the data only into the interface table. So this is how the G, GL interface works, okay? This is loading the data into the interface table only and you require an extra, extra job to be invoked. Nothing but the third step you have to perform. You have to invoke the import general ESS job to load the data from the interface table to the base table. So before running the ESS job, always try to validate your data from the GL interface table, okay? I already prepared the query, like here if you observe, GL interface, I'm just trying to get all the data of today's data. Just click on okay. Now click on data and now just see whether you have the batch ID 8001 which is available or not. One more important thing, I think I, I would have missed it. So group ID is a very important thing when you are working with this, okay? So group ID I mentioned as this one, right? 80,001, 80,001 group ID. In all the rows I mentioned you, 
mentioned the 80,001. So generally, when you have a good amount of huge data, always it's a best practice to mention the group ID because that is a parameter you can mention in the UI while invoking your import job. So search with a group ID. Okay. Yep. Can you see with group ID 80,001, I got two reports, right? Now, what I'll do is what is the next step? We need to invoke the general import. Let's go to the ESS job. Click on schedule new process and select the import journals. Now it will mention, it will ask you what is the data access set, what is the source, mention the source, select the source as manual. And here it is selecting, it is asking whether you want to import all the group IDs or a specific group ID. So always it's a best practice to select your particular group ID. So this will help you, you to find out if any errors and also process the data in a very easier manner. Okay. Click on submit. So this import job will perform the data validation, which is available in the interface table, and then it will perform the data insertion to base table. One more important thing is, well, invoking web service also, right? So before inserting into the interface table, even web service validates good amount of, uh, what you say, like, a, like it will perform all the validation, like your ledger ID, your particular amount columns, it will perform those things and then only it will perform, but still, while in, this import job also will perform another next level of validations. Just refresh. Yep, it got completed. Now what you can do is just select like, uh, like uh, yeah. I think group ID. Yeah, group ID is 80,001, but the batch name is this one, okay? This is 9,001, 90,001 kind of thing. So I'll just click on cancel. Now search the batch name, manage journals. I just mentioned the batch name, general batch search properly, nothing but because generally it provides some accounting period while searching, you may not find out the record which you have done, right? It got inserted. And you should be able to see the data, right? Just click on this one, general batch. Right, it just got two lines. Okay, now let's, I'll just show you one more thing. I'll just want to create one more data to just recheck it. I'll mention two year, two year, okay, and then Change the group ID. Right. Other place. Okay. And also, I'll mention a different amount this time. I'll say 250. 250. Okay. Now, press Alt Enter. Data got inserted. Now, go back to the interface table. Nothing but the VIP. Click on View. Now I should be able to see the 90,000 90, related one with the amount of 250 each. Got it? This one. Now again, perform the general import. Click on schedule new process, import journals. And now here again, select the source as manual. So until unless your data is available in the interface table, you cannot select your group ID, okay? It will not show that, you see, whatever the data it is showing, right? This LOVs are totally works on the data available in the interface table. You can submit. Okay. Now just click on cancel. So this was the one, right? I think. Still running. Yep, got inserted. Yep. Now you will see it, right? And click on the batch. It should see one debit line, one credit line with the amount of 250 each. Okay. So this is how you can perform general import. And you can, and as I told you, right, like when you perform a general import, these are the list of tables which will get involved. One is interface table and the remaining three base tables, right? GLJE batches, GLJE headers, as well as GLJE lines. Okay. Thank you.